This episode of Dreams and Drive is brought to you by Olay Body. I'm loving the Olay Body exfoliating and moisturizing body wash because you don't have to worry about that oily coated feeling or harsh feeling exfoliation because this body wash rinses off clean and is gentle enough for everyday use. I believe that relationships are the fundamental element to everything in life that you want to be successful at because it really is about how you make people feel. But it first starts with self-awareness. How do you make yourself feel? How do, what, are, what are your emotions? How do you feel? What's your view? And then how do you express them in a way that the other person can receive, feel good about, or at least you know understand so that you guys can achieve your goal? We're embarrassed to ask people for a referral on a date. Like a lot of us won't even tell people, even when it comes to relationships, that we're single. He may have a friend who knows someone that knows someone that's right for you. And usually your husband or your wife is only like two or three people away, but you won't open your mouth. We'll try to take on so much for ourselves and missing out on opportunities that we can learn from others, that we can get assistance from others. We got to push past that. How bad do you want this? Hi, this is Spicy Mari, and you're listening to Dreams and Drive. Hey, Dream Drivers, welcome to episode 272 of the Dreams and Drive podcast. And today's guest, relationship expert Spicy Mari, is going to be answering the question of how can we create magnetic, purpose-filled, and passionate personal relationships? Spicy is the CEO and founder of The Spicy Life, and as a relationship expert, she has dedicated her life's work to encouraging singles and couples to communicate and connect more effectively by incorporating passion and adventure back into their interpersonal relationships. I'm really excited to have Spicy on the show because I think this is a topic that we all are constantly trying to improve in our lives. How do we make sure that our personal relationships are fulfilling and also teaching us things? And I think that Spicy is the perfect person to have on the show to talk about this. She's also going to take us through her personal dream driving journey and how she ended up being mid matchmaker herself, right? I think this is something that we all can relate to and we can really reflect on how tapping into our personal gifts, our personal passions can create a life that is aligned for us. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you're sharing it with your community. You can find us across the board at Dreams and Drive on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Screenshot this episode. Tell me what you like. Tell your friends what you like about it. Post it on your social networks. I really do appreciate and your work really does help us grow the Dream Driver community. And remember, wherever you are, hit that subscribe button so that you get notifications every time we have a new episode. All right, let's hear from Spicy. Super excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I am super excited to have you on. I feel like this is a topic that we haven't touched on lately. We're going to be talking about relationships on this podcast, and you are you are Best the expert, ever. right? You are <laughs> the expert. But before we get into that, we have to, I love to kind of wind back and go back in time, right? I think really thinking about who we were as children is really important to the dream driving journey. So Spicy, tell me about this. Um, when you were a kid, what was inspiring you? What were What were you really taking in around about the world around you? So you're going to laugh. I knew my calling and purpose at a very young age. Really? Like, yeah, like five or six, I had a gift. Now we didn't call it purpose back then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like but, I have a purpose as a six-year-old, six right? <laughs> my, my, my future six-year-old will definitely be speaking in that a higher vibrating language. But <laughs> me, however, um, I knew my calling um, and now call it my calling, of course, but I was observing and watching my mom go from relationship to relationship, dating guy to guy, right? Mm-hmm. And um, one thing that we knew was that mom was going to stay with the man. Um, my mom is like just as spicy. That's really where I get <laughs> a lot of my <laughs> vibrance and you know personality from. But one thing that was for sure was that relationships um, increased or she operated from a high level of self-worth when she was in a relationship. Not that that's healthy, but I picked up on the fact um, and cues such as mom is nicer to me. I got spank less. Mm -hmm. We had more money when she was in a relationship, Um, more quality time. We did more activities. I got more toys, um, more fine dining. And so I started saying, hmm, when mom is in a relationship, this is good. When she's not in a relationship, this is bad. So I started going up to men in the grocery store, at the (laughs) gas station, at my school. And I'm like pitching mom. 
And I'm like, if you choose my mom, I come with, you know, free with purchase and I'll be a good little girl. Look how cute she is. She cooks really well. (laughs) I was literally pitching her and um, started to see like she was getting into relationships. She was, you know, dating some of these men that I introduced her to. And she really, you were being a matchmaker at that age? I was matchmaking that, that young. And she got married three times um, by the age that I am now, you know, b- because she was just always open to relationship. And even if it was her child doing it. But for me, it was I have this ideal image of what like a, a, a family should look like and realizing mine is not complete. Right. When they would say, like, where's your mommy and daddy? I would be like, oh, I only have a mom. And so I would make it a point to like, I'm going to get me a dad. Like I'm going to find a way somehow. And now a part of my, you know, in my adulthood, I understand that like you, your self-worth and esteem should not be governed by your relationships. Yeah. So thank God she gave me, you know, books and tools because she didn't want me to make the same mistakes. And that wind up directing and steering, you know, my walk into getting educated around relationships and what those tools are that couples actually need in order to have successful relationships. Because she also didn't want me to have as many marriages as she did <laughs> and as many, you know, boyfriends. Uh, but d- it definitely steered, definitely steered the direction of the industry that I'm in now. And my mission now is to restore the family unit and, you know, break generational curses so that we can have healthy and successful relationships. Snap to that. Um, what do you think, looking back at that younger you, right? What do you think were your skills? What do you think were the things that beyond just being a matchmaker, those yeah. concrete, minute skills that you had at a young age, yeah. that you probably still have now? Yeah, very much so. Um, I would say my, I like to call them gifts, right? Like my spiritual gifts, Mm -hmm. Um, the gift of communication, being fearless and able to um, talk to anyone about anything and understanding even back then the importance of vulnerability and sharing first and getting others to share with you, right? So I wasn't afraid to like embarrass myself because then that made other people feel comfortable, you know, embarrassing themselves and opening up. I would say another gift that I realized I had back then was connection, um, feeling people's energies and spirits and knowing who should be best friends, who should be playing together on the playground, who should, um, who should be working together. You know, um, I was always like partnering people like on teams um, and, you know, always talking out of turn (laughs) to the point where like my school teachers would, you know, report me to my mom and say, you know, she's always trying to like direct people and, you know, connect people in the classroom and it's disruptive. And my mom was like, if you're a good teacher, you'll channel that energy into leadership. Mm -hmm. And so she then challenged my teachers (laughs) um, to make me like one of the class leaders. Um, And then I would say the third thing that um, I had was high self-determination. Early on, I had a very competitive spirit that was very driven. Um, I did gymnastics and cheer and realized like I liked winning. I liked Mm -hmm. hearing yes and not receiving no. So if that's (laughs) the case, um, I understood at a very young age, like rejection comes with winning. You just have to get better each time. And it's not a loss. It's a learning lesson. Um, so I, I, although I couldn't articulate it at this time when I was younger and I can now, I would say like those three, there are the three things that I understood very early on communication, connection <laughs> and drive for sure. Well, you know, I like that drive. This is called dreams and drive, right? So it's, <laughs> maybe that's why you're on the show, but probably, you know, so, so thinking about it, right. We all kind of have these ideas of what we'll be when we'll grow up. We go to college. Kind of with an idea. I know for me, I thought I knew what I wanted to do, but you know how that kind of works out. For you, entering into young adulthood and early adulthood, how did this dream or how did you kind of use these gifts of yours to figure out what kind of life you were going to make for yourself? So early on, I too was, I I thought I had an idea, even though I was always in like the relationship realm, even early on as a child, my mom had it in her head that I was going to be the first to go to college and that I was going to be a forensic scientist. Like, (laughs) have you ever watched Dexter? She expected me to be dusting off evidence off of like crime scenes. That is hilarious. Um, (laughs) So I was like, okay, let me appease this dream of hers and wound up going to school for molecular cell biology and went to UC Berkeley. And it was there that I wasn't passing like these science classes. And I was like, this sucks. This is for the birds. Like, 
I don't really, I'm not really passionate about this. This is, I'm clearly doing this like for my mom because I don't want to be the next Dexter. Mm -hmm. Um, And I unenrolled from my major and then reapplied to the major that I wanted to do, which was communication. I took some communication classes and I was like, oh, this is more for me. And we studied everything from the interpersonal relationships to, um, you know, knowing your audience, understanding your audience. And I took all of those tools and made it about relationships and studied, which then led me to get my master's in communication, my method, the SPICY, which mm-hmm. is self, passion, intimacy, communication, and learning to say yes. But along the way, making all of these crazy relationship mistakes, learning lessons, and then trying to figure out how do I solve for these challenges that I experienced and that other people are experiencing. Because it's not enough to just like match people. Mm-hmm. I also want them to have successful relationships and retention. So how do we get the retention part, right? Right. So you had the spicy method before you actually launched the brand or thought about what you could do with it? I had launched the brand okay. and knew that it was going to be everything around health and relationships. Okay. Um, and then it wasn't until my master's program that I did the research behind it. So I was like, okay, oh, okay. This and, this. and then I did like the case studies and the research in order to support my theory on what makes a healthy relationship. And so my cohort and I all like in the it was the grace of God. They all agreed to work on my business um, method together um, as one of like our final assignments. And so working through that and actually like testing it and doing the research. And I had already gathered the research from clients, but now it was just like, okay, this is the data. The data is supporting what I knew in my heart and what I believed. And that's what makes it so legitimate too, is like, it's not just spiritual for me. It's also scientific. It's, it's merger between both. You know, a lot of people, I feel like now in the age of Instagram and anyone can say anything, right? It's good to know that you have the research behind it. Because a lot right. of people can just be out here saying, you got to do this, you got to do that. But Spicy is coming with the, listen, I did the, I did the actual studies. I did the yes. research, those independent, <laughs> the independent projects, right? <laughs> <Correct>. So, <laughs> um, but you know, in between that, so in between your bachelor's, so you went to the University of California, Berkeley, yep. right? Um. So in between that time, I know you were also doing the nine to five hustle, right? And a lot of our screen drivers, I think like it's important, I would say, to have that experience, right? Um, What do you think were some of the things you were learning about yourself during this time? Because now you have your own business, right? Did you see yourself working at other companies forever? Or did you eventually want to, you know, do, do your own thing full time? I was afraid to do um, radio full time because I always had a, re- a relationship radio show. I was afraid to do radio full time. I was afraid to do my relationship show hosting full time. I was I was operating in a place of um, not so much even just fear, but it was like instability. And so I needed that stability of the nine to five so that I had uh, the security of that like paycheck. Yeah. However the time that was being dedicated to helping like build somebody else's empire was frustrating. So while I'm working, you know, these nine to fives and I've had several corporate jobs, I looked at them as like, okay, this is providing that financial security. That's letting me now invest in what my dreams are in what Mm -hmm. I want. But along the way, learning that, um, regular being regulated <laughs> by the man as I would call it um didn't work for my unorthodox approaches when it comes to like my coaching or when it comes to my training and I was trying to even juggle both starting my company in the relationship coaching realm and working these nine to fives and something's got to give so in the beginning you know my initial clients were not getting the full best of me you know my husband um, at the time who was my fiance who wasn't getting like the best of me mm-hmm. so I was you know trying to juggle all of these jobs when I actually have a romance astrologist who's on my team now who does readings for my clients. And she had pulled some cards for me and was like, the universe is saying that if you don't make a decision, it's going to make a decision for you. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, what does that mean? Um, lo and behold, um, winds up being let go from the nine to five learning. Okay. I'm disposable. Someone, the, although I think I'm bringing so much value to this company, it's not mine, right? Yeah. They just see me as, you know, a product that's replaceable or, uh, you know, a, um, member that's replaceable, but I don't want to be replaceable. I believe in me and everything that I have to offer. And I want to be able to offer that to the world. So the universe made the decision. And from there, I asked my husband, I was like, look, I have been nervous, um, uncomfortable, like staying in these nine to fives for security. 
I need you to just allow me this space to just build my business. Just I'm the best investment you will ever make. I promise if you believe in me and you don't make me go back to corporate America, (laughs) that this is the best risk you could ever take. Just bet on me. And he was like, okay, I'm gonna give you like, I'm I'm gonna let you do this. So I, you know, I came on my little business plan and I was like, this is what I'm going to change. This is what I'm going to do with the spicy life. And this is how I'm going to grow it. And since then have manifested that and brought it to fruition, but I had to be uncomfortable for a very long time to realize I'm not comfortable with discomfort. Like I didn't like being in that Mm -hmm. position where I was disposable. I didn't like being um, in a position where I wasn't head decision maker or where my input wasn't and as wasn't as valuable as I knew it to be. And I liked being the person in the driver's seat who's actually helping guide people's directions when it comes to their love life. And you were talking about something that you mentioned earlier is you were operating also in that fear, right? What do you, what did you do or what do you think others who are operating in this place of fear, what is that thing that you really have to overcome? Because I've done over 270 interviews, right? On this yeah. show. And it's funny because you always think the hardest part is are the tactical things like the business Correct. plan, <laughs> the operation. And most people say it's the battles you have with yourself. Yeah. For sure. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. I think, um, and one thing I speak to, because I teach this to my clients as well, is that we don't always have the confidence when it comes to even dating Mm -hmm. because we don't have the competence. And so I think that the competence is what helps secure the confidence. And what competence is, is like looking at what your spiritual gifts are, looking at what your talents are, looking at where you need areas of improvement. Like, what can I strengthen? If I don't know how to run operations, okay, can I go take a class? Can I go, you know, and it's the same thing with like dating. If I don't know how to speak to men, can I get a coach? Like, where are you lacking the competence? Because that competence and that skill set and that training that you get is going to lead to the confidence. Once you know I can do this, we're more likely to be, Um, you know, in the way that self-determination works, we're more likely to be, um, to feel adequate enough to try. And then when you know that you have the competence, if you fall, you'll get back up and you'll try again. Whereas if you don't have any of the competence, you're not going to have that much confidence. Like we can tell ourselves affirmations all day long, but we don't believe them all the time. I can tell myself (laughs) I could go do this, but if I don't believe it, that's going to work against me manifesting that affirmation. And so while I do think that it's very important to have those, um, self-talk conversations with yourself where you are affirming what you would like to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of what happens with like anything in manifesting or making it a reality is that if you don't have the skill sets and the application, you're never going to believe that it's possible. So you have to at least try and then overcome after you've tried, you know, that rejection or that low point and try again. Because if you don't try again, like you didn't really want it that bad. I'm a firm believer you want it that bad. (laughs) There's multiple things I've been rejected or people who have rejected me. And I'm just like, okay, let it go. But you got to try again. How badly do you want this? And so with the spicy life, was that what you were trying to do is really teach people that competence part? Absolutely. So when you come to the firm, it's usually because you are extremely successful at a variety of things in life. Maybe it's sports, maybe it's your career, you know, maybe you um, have these amazing talents, but for whatever reason, someone isn't, you are not actually allowing people to see your gifts. You're not allowing people to see your authentic self and everything that you have to offer because you're operating from fear as well. And so when you don't have the skill set or you don't have the competence when it comes to dating, the relationship experience, because you fail, someone broke your heart and you didn't get back up and you refuse. Now you're successful at all these other things that you've prioritized because those things have been filling up your love cup or helping create your identity of yourself, but you haven't been stretching yourself when it comes to relationships. And most of us don't because it's so personal. We take it so personal. It's such an emotional experience for us. Mm -hmm. But if I can teach you the logic behind like this step and this step, um, and people are like, but I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to go this mechanical route. I don't want to go. And I'm like, but let me just teach you the skill set. The emotions will be there because clearly you've mastered the emotional part. Um, the emotions <laughs> will be there. Let me help you with the skill set and tools and methods. Like I give actual formulas on do this, this, and this, and you will get this result. And I'll tell you what, my men knock it out the park. My women, it is such an emotional experience for them that it takes them longer to let it sink in, right? Because for men, for men, they're like, okay, just tell me how to win. Yeah, they want the formula like, okay, just, and you know, man, they don't want to do more than you, you you give me what to do. I will do it to a T and I just want to execute. I just want to (laughs) execute. Yeah. 
for my women, it's like, but what about the journey? How am I going to feel? Oh my God, that doesn't feel authentic. I would never say <laughs> something like that. It's like all of this self-talk mm-hmm. and I give a spicy assessment. I actually have an assessment when you come into the program of where you lie within SPICY, like where your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, yeah. and threats, like where your, your rooms for improvement and where can we grow? And my women always score themselves lower on the spicy assessment than my men, always. Even always. though- in reality, they may have more of these things than Absolutely. they know. Absolutely. In reality, they actually really are great with these things, but it's the belief system. It's what society has fed them, what they have leaned into, what they have believed, what their family has taught them, the environment that they've grown up in, what they've already been predisposed to, you know, psychologically from their parents and upbringing. Like there's so many factors that play into it, but we're often, you know, told that it's okay for men to be this arrogant, cocky, you know, leader, whereas us as women, it's like, oh, well, if I score myself high, you know, let me try to be as, you know, realistic as possible Mm -hmm. and even hard on ourselves as possible. Like, because we are actually very critical. Women are critical. So we're more critical on ourselves than men actually are on us and themselves. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. It's kind but... of like men with applying to jobs, right? Like men will apply for jobs Absolutely. that they are nowhere near qualified for. Yeah. Whereas we're like, mm, there's one thing right here that I don't know how to do. So I'm not going to apply. So yeah. I, it, it's crazy. So with the spicy life then, um, let's let's take a step back, right? Why do you think dream drivers, especially people who have big goals, big aspirations, big dreams, really need to invest in building solid relationships. Because I think a lot of times people say, I could do it by myself. I don't need anybody or, you know, I'll figure it out on my own. But why is really taking the time to build that competence so important, especially for this audience? Yeah. So that's a great question. There's nothing that you can accomplish in this life without relationships. As much as you want to feel like you are independent, you know, I don't care if it's mailing a stamp or a letter at the post office, you still need to go deliver to somebody to like deliver that for you. Like it doesn't matter what it is. You can't do anything by yourself. And oftentimes we'll try to take on so much for ourselves and missing out on opportunities that we can learn from others, that we can get assistance from others, that we can be guided by others. And so I believe that relationships are the fundamental element to everything in life that you want to be successful at, because it really is about how you make people feel. Mm-hmm. But it first starts with self-awareness. How do you make yourself feel? How do what are what are your emotions? How do you feel? What's your view? And then how do you express them in a way that the other person can receive, feel good about, or at least you know understand, so that you guys can achieve your goal? Because you you need people. Like there's no way getting around it. We need it to fill up our love cup when it comes to friendship. Mm-hmm. We need people when it comes to colleagues, when it comes to getting a mission accomplished or a task done. We need it when it comes to reproduction and when it comes to starting a family. Like we need people. So the better that you get at relationships, the more fulfilled and happy that you will be when it comes to your life. Studies show that people who are in healthy relationships mark that they are happier lived people than people who have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And you need relationships for money too. <laughs> it's funny because I don't know if you saw that um, that quote going around with uh, Kim Kardashian, where she was talking about her relationship with Kanye and how like she got she had all like the the big things right, mm-hmm. but it was those small things that she realized that she didn't have and she wanted, like that intimacy, the spending mm-hmm. more time together, all that stuff. But um, let's 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 take this since you are the relationship expert, right? And I think it's always fun to do this. What do you, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges that your clients are coming to you with like what are the big problems they're like hey spicy help me with this because I am struggling here and then we'll transition into some of the things that you help people do or some of the you know formulas that we can use to really improve in these areas so you just mentioned um intimacy right now with Kim K Mm -hmm. um that's number one Number one is intimacy. And the second thing would be communication. Yeah. Um, those I might even argue that communication is first, intimacy is second. It could go either way. Uh, but those are the two main things that people struggle with. Um, intimacy because people do not feel safe to be vulnerable, to be transparent, and don't know how to bond and connect. And that is usually you guiding the psyche and guiding someone's emotions. Mm-hmm. You don't usually know how to do that because you don't usually know how to self-regulate your own. So let alone be responsible for somebody else's. And that is a skill set. 
And it also requires you to step outside of your comfort zone and potentially take the risk of getting hurt. But most people don't want to experience that, which is why I teach my clients that instead of falling in love, we're going to rise in love. And that's a different process than just free falling without a parachute. No, we're going to climb these ladders and these steps and take one step Each way, you take a step, then I take a step. You take a step, then I take a step. And that's how we climb and rise in love. Um, When it comes to communication, that's always a huge struggle because we all have different communication patterns that we've learned from our upbringing, from relationships that have shaped us. Um, We've usually, though, usually we are mirroring our parents' communication. Mm -hmm. Um, And if we aren't, then maybe we've learned from that. However, we have these thoughts that run through our mind and we try to articulate them. But for whatever reason, it's not landing with our audience. Similar to you as a host, you know what your audience wants to hear and you tailor your message. You tailor the episode to them. We don't do that enough for our partners. We just want to get our message out and we don't care how they're going to appreciate it, how they're going to absorb it, what environment they're in, what distractions they have going on. Um, Is it the appropriate time? What's going on in their life? Like we don't take any cultural background. Like we don't take anything into account. We're just like, well, this is my message. This is my truth. And I wanted to deliver it to you. Oh my God. I'm sorry you you couldn't handle it. You are triggering me right now. (laughs) I'm only saying that because, you know, the other day my friend was in the car with me. She heard a conversation I was having with my boyfriend. And it's something that I do all the time, but because she was a new person, Person, she was like, wait, why were you talking about this? And you know, he's around his family. And I was like, you know how you don't, you know, yep. you, it never even crossed my mind that the reason why we always get into these arguments is because he probably doesn't want to talk about it right there. But in yep. my head, it's like, you, it doesn't matter who cares who, who's listening. You know, it's just, you just trigger oh, me. There. But, but it, it does makes, matter. I oh, know it, it really does. And then when I, Just for the whole week, I realized, Raina, don't talk about that when he's with his family. And I was able to actually get the response that I wanted when I just waited till he came home to ask him a question. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Hey, Dream Drivers, as a new mom, my shower time is also much needed me time and self-care time. It's one of the few spaces to get those must-have moments for mind and body. Plus, feeling my best helps me reach my fullest potential for the day. When you look good, you smell good, you are ready to do good. That's why I love Olay Body Exfoliating and Moisturizing Body Wash with sugar, cocoa butter, and vitamin B3. Some of the things I love about this product is that it's made with cocoa butter, which feels ultra nourishing to your skin. Also, you don't have to worry about the oily coated feeling or harsh feeling exfoliation because this body wash rinses clean and is gentle enough for everyday use. Plus, you can have a lot of trust that this product works. Olay's 65 years of beauty science is incorporated into this product with body care designed by skin experts to improve the look and feel of your skin from head to toe. You definitely need to give these Olay body body washes a try. They completely changed how I thought about my body care routine in my shower. As I said, shower time is precious, so I invest in the best. You can find Olay body products in store or online. Olay body, fearless in my skin. Hey, Dream Drivers, I don't know about you, but for me, the summer is the time when I indulge all my cravings. And sometimes I just want to bite up a big, juicy burger. And when I want that, I go and get me a McDonald's Big Mac. You can't forget about your McDonald's world famous fries. And I always add an order of an Oreo McFlurry, too. And listen, I'm not a huge beef eater. So when I do eat beef, I try to make it count. And for me, I go heavy on the Mac sauce. I always make sure I get my pickle to eat my Big Mac in peace. Now that I have a baby dream driver, I got to make sure that I don't have to share everything because he's always in my plate. But listen, I haven't always been a Big Mac fan, but the day I tried it, I can now resonate with the whole, you don't know what you're missing until you've had a Big Mac. And you'll never forget the first person that put you on. So let me be that person for you. If you haven't already tried a Big Mac, make sure you have Add it to your next Mickey D's order. If you're like me and you're always on the go, you can always order ahead on the McDonald's mobile app. Um, one of the one of the exercises that I give my clients is called an audience journey map. Okay. And this was something that I created around communication because you have a specific type of audience, right? So we have like Let's say we have your listeners, we have your best friend, we have your boyfriend, Mm -hmm. and we have your mama, and then we have like, just let's say like your boss, okay? Yeah. What's the message that we're trying to deliver? If it's one universal message, what is that message? Maybe it's um, 
hey guys, listen to my episode. Um, it's coming out with Spicy Mari this week. Mm. You are going to deliver that message differently to your audience than you are to your mama, than you are to your boyfriend, than you are to your bestie. Like all of those people are going to get a different, or they should, let me tell you this, they should get a different translation of each of those messages. For your boyfriend, you should be like, baby, guess what? I just finished this episode. You know, um, if you have some free time, I would love if you support it and listen. But, you know, if you listen to this one, I'll make sure that I listen to your favorite episode. Like Mm -hmm. we should be speaking a different language to each person. But oftentimes we're lazy. We don't want to do that. We don't tailor it to them. And the other part of the exercise, too, is like, okay, you analyzing what are the distractions that's going on for them. Also, we have to anticipate how they're going to respond. We also have to anticipate why do they care? That it also seems matters. like too much work, Spicy. It's too much work. <laughs> like, See? I, I, you, I don't mirroring, do right? you don't want to no, no, do the work. I'm mirroring. Like, you know, that's what people would probably say to you, right? They're For probably sure. like, oh my God, yeah. I get that all the time. It's why we need professional help. It's too much work to get into college. It's too much work to get my master's. It was too much work to start my own business. All these things are too much work. It's too much work to get a husband. All yeah. these things, yeah, it's a lot of freaking work. But how bad do you want it? And we mm-hmm. will work hard. And like shift a a lot of things for money. But when it comes to love and when it comes to relationship, we don't want to change not a dang, dang thing. Why is that? Why do we think that the gratification of money is more value than the gratification of love? And studies show people do think that it's easier to make money than it is to find true love. And so guess where we focus all our energy? We'll invest all day long in like uh, getting a tax. What are the people who do your taxes? A tax accountant? Accountant. (laughs) We'll we'll get them. Financial advisor. Financial advisor. We'll do that all day long. But when it comes to helping us grow in relationship and communication and like learning these tools, you know, and it's not something that it's, it's going to kill you. It actually, you, you re, it's reprogramming. We help with the reprogramming and then it becomes like drinking water to you and breathing. It's like, oh, this is normal. This is natural. It becomes your way of being so that that way you don't have to like try to turn it on anymore. You've been practicing it for so long and perfecting that craft that now it just becomes so easy and smooth. Mm-hmm. I just had a client literally text me today and she's like, oh my God, your spicy method Thank you so much. I'm applying these tools to, you know, this guy that I'm talking to right now. And he told me that no one has ever made him feel like this and make him made him feel so affirmed and feel so good from these methods. And mind you, this was someone who came in like talking crazy to men. And so for her to even be affirming me, you know, with my, I'm like, thank you so much, girl. Like this message made my day. And then she screenshotted the text between him and her where he's like applauding her and like, telling her how much he, you know, he's looking forward to spending time with her. Like he can't wait because he likes the way she makes him feel. Yeah. And, and that's what life is, it's right? Adjusting. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't get it. We don't care Nan, about what you said. We care about how it made us feel when you said it. It's up to our interpretation. But if you don't deliver that message to your audience or, you know, to that person in the way that they need to receive it, then, then you're not going to get the result, the desired rec- result. And what did I tell you about one of the things? I like to win. I like yes. So how do I need to tailor this message to you to get what I want? Because I like my needs being met. So not mm-hmm. everybody likes their needs. Being, I like my <laughs> needs being met. <laughs> yeah. And then you Let's realize, I, message. you mentioned something earlier, how you said that sometimes women will say, you know, I don't feel authentic, right? Mm-hmm. And how do we, how do we navigate that? This desire for authenticity, right? Yeah. At the same time, realizing that, you may have to be uncomfortable and this authentic self that you've been demonstrating is not giving you the results that you want. Right. Right. I think we have to come to grips with realizing that something that may feel authentic isn't serving us. Mm. And if it's not serving us or it's not helping us grow. And if we're not stretching and we're not evolving, then we are actually undesirable. Nobody wants someone who is so stuck in their ways that they're not willing to grow. Because what that person and that partner sees is if you're not growing, therefore you're going to stunt my growth. And I am a reflection of you. So if you're not evolving or you're not willing to evolve, then this is a bad deal because we're not going to go anywhere. I can't be responsible for both of our evolution. You have to work with me on this. So the people who are stuck in their ways of like, but that doesn't feel authentic, or I can't say that. That's not what I would say. Well, you're operating from your child self, your shadow self. You're operating from a low vibrating self. And what my goal is to to help you grow so that you can be in higher vibrating thought, higher vibrating emotions, higher vibrating beliefs, higher vibrating behaviors, because that's what's actually going to get you your goal accomplished. So just because it's not authentic doesn't mean you can't claim it and own it. 
I mean, blonde hair for me isn't authentic, but I still got these highlights and now I own them. (laughs) So we're willing to stretch in a lot of other areas. But when it comes to personal development, we're just like, "Mm, that doesn't feel right for me. Well, what's the result that not feeling right for you indicates? Just like when people say, "Mm, I got a type and I don't want to step outside of that. Well, how's your type doing for you? Yep. And so, you want to be here. You want to be talking about it if you were if you were happy. If right? you were satisfied. You were, yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. People, you know, it's sure it may be a part of your nature, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. And me being cold or distant or fearful or, you know, whatever those emotions are that don't serve me. If it's not helping, you know, me get my goal accomplished, I need to do, you know, a little dump. I need to do a, a, a download, get rid of that waste and upload some tools that are going to help me. So let's talk about those tools, right? Um, you have the spicy method and I know mm-hmm. you you work with clients, right? But give us a little bit of, I guess, the one-on-one overlook, overview of how, what we can, as dream drivers can start doing to start transforming our relationships beyond so, coming to work with you, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, because my tools cost, like working with me does cost now. I know, I know. Um, but I will give you like one that I think helps with a lot of people, which is we do this for business all the time when it comes to our goals, mm-hmm. um, but we don't do it for ourselves enough, which is a SWOT analysis. I call it a spicy SWOT. Okay, And that is really giving yourself the affirmations that you need by looking at your strengths. What makes you the strong individual or the positive individual or the incredible individual that you are? Why would somebody want to be with you? So you write that list down of why someone want to be with you. The next is the weaknesses. Why would somebody not want to be with you? What have your exes said about you? What has your family said about you? Mm -hmm. What what annoys people about you? What are all your weaknesses? Then you're going to look at O for opportunity. Where are the opportunities of growth from those weaknesses? So if one of the weaknesses is that you're stubborn, what's an opportunity for growth? Okay, well, next time someone presents something to me, um, instead of instantly saying no, maybe I'll consider it if it does help me achieve a goal or if it does, if there is going to be a reciprocation later on or an exchange factor, right? Mm -hmm. That's an opportunity. And then the threat is if I don't work on this weakness, what's going to happen? If I don't work on this weakness and I stay stubborn, the weak, the uh, the weakness um, or the threat from that weakness may be that I end up alone, or <laughs> that nobody wants to fool with me, or that I stay you know single lo- single longer than I should have, or I might not have kids, or I might not get the house that I want. Like there's all kinds of things that can come from you not working on your weaknesses, mm-hmm. but it takes you know some self awareness and reflection, and you doing a personal SWAT, and you come into some truth moments. And I even take it a step further and say, you know, ask the people who you love what they want to add to that weakness list, because oftentimes they're afraid to tell you and you won't listen. So they just don't share with you areas that you could be feeding their love languages more or you could be showing up for them more. And this is a great opportunity for you to stretch yourselves and say, oh, my God, I didn't know that about myself. Like I could improve on this. And it, in the meantime, makes you more desirable if you work on those weaknesses so that that way, when you enter into relationship you're not looking for someone to make you whole or to fix you. Mm-hmm. You've done maybe like 70% of all of the grunt work yourself. And then when they come along, all they got to do is kind of heal maybe 30% versus mm-hmm. trying to heal 100% of those things, right? They yeah. don't have to compromise as much. Yeah, no, that I think that's, no, that makes a lot of sense. And it's something that we, like you said, we apply to business all the time. People listening to this, may, they may know about the SWOT analysis, but, ne- but have never done it on themselves. So thank you for sharing that, Spicy. Um, you know, this is a show about dream driving. So I couldn't have you on and not ask you about what has the role to entrepreneurship been like for you, right? Building this firm, building a team, niching down, because this is a very niche area, right? Yeah. You, what do you think has been like some of the challenges that you faced building the Spicy Life brand? Oh my gosh. Um, limiting beliefs for myself and from others is probably number one. Um, people telling me I couldn't do it or that I shouldn't do it, that it's so hard. You know, why would I go this route? Um, this industry is competitive. Um, now this is the number one growing industry. So I'm so happy really? that I stuck with it. Yeah. Like when it comes to relationships, I mean, there's so much, you know, to to earn because it's the number one thing that people are challenged with. And so when it comes to my industry, I I survived the recession because people for the first time in their life were like, oh my God, I'm alone. This is the zombie apocalypse. Yep. This COVID, right? I might be alone for another year. (laughs) (laughs) People were like, this is the time that I probably should be working on myself. So people came in droves um, last year 
um, and this year too, make sure that they don't repeat the same mistakes that they've been repeating. And so when it comes to even like digital tools that are out there, I'm teaching my clients how to use those more effectively. And so I think dating apps was like one of the best things to ever happen because the more you experience these tools, the more defeat you may feel, the more rejection you may feel, the more you need help. And so the fact that I've mastered these tools and these skill sets, it's really given me like, you know, a a in into helping a lot of people with, you know, transforming not just their perspectives, but like fueling their connections. And that's why that's my tagline, transform your perspectives, fuel your connections. And so one thing that I had to get over first was telling myself that I couldn't do it because I'm the first in my family to ever run their own business Mm -hmm. or to even, you know, go to college or, you know, even like make such an incredible, you know, leap. But the confidence to believe in myself and then also, you know, clearing out all of that noise from outside factors and then really taking the time to like invest in the education that I needed so that I could feel once again, competent in what I was doing. And so, and it's a continuous process. Even now I'm still taking classes. I'm still doing workshops. I'm leading workshops at the same time, but I'm still like, okay, there's always more for me to learn Mm -hmm. and get better at when it comes to my business. It doesn't stop just because it's thriving now. And what was something tactical, right? I know I talked about how some of those intangible things were were difficult, but just tactical part of building a business that kicked your ass. Like, oh my gosh, the finances. Um, (laughs) For a lot of us, right? Right? Like you have to get that part right. Operations, finance, event planning. I mean, there's, uh, I just, at the end of the day, I just want to coach and give relationship advice and, you know, uh, hold my clients accountable and do the exercises. But there's so much stuff behind the scenes that running the business, um, that I think I really had to buckle down and I thank God I had my purpose mate, who is my husband, who is a financial wizard, um, who works in finance, who was able to like, tell me, okay, it's great that you have me, but you can't be 100% dependent on me. You need to know this for yourself. Mm -hmm. So he sat me down and taught me how to crunch numbers in the Excel spreadsheet. He sat me down and told me how to run the data on the, you know, assessments. He sat me down and like, told me how to do the budgeting and QuickBooks and stuff like that, because I was so Depending on him that he was like, uh, I learned your method. You need to learn my method. And I was like, okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but that was like really challenging for me. And if he wasn't here, we would have had to hire somebody to come in and do that. And of course he's on the team. So, you know, he has shares in the company. So it behooves him to like, of course, grow us and support these endeavors, but you have to have somebody who teaches you some of those, you know, operations or functions that you're not strong in. And once you do it, my confidence is on 100 now that I know how to do like some dang QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) it's little things like that that you're like, oh, but I don't want to do this stuff. And that's the stuff that will actually like destroy and break your business. When you don't know the business side or know how to run the business, it's not enough to just have the spiritual gifts. You have to have the tools as well on the business side to be able to make it successful. And you want longevity. So it's only, you know, it only makes sense to invest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a lot of us, you could be the most competent person, right? But if you don't have the clients, how do you build a business? So how did you navigate that? You know, making sure that you were building, you were getting clients and getting the message in front of the people. Cause that's a hard, that's hard for a lot of us. Super right? hard. Yeah, for sure. I think for me, um, I knew I had the gift, you know, of Gab and I had the vocals and being able to like put the message out there was one. I knew I could deliver the message, but like mm. how and to whom I think um, is extremely important. And so that's where I took classes. I took, um, you know, I, I took classes not only from, you know, hosting, but also to like how to reach more audience members, marketing classes mm-hmm. on how to like drive sales because word of mouth is my number one actual way of building clients. But then when, you know, if, if the audience is silent that month, how else am I going to do it? So what am I going to yeah. invest in? How am I going to market this? So I took some marketing classes and some workshops and, you know, invested in some courses so that I could learn this end. And then I got also some team members around me who are marketing experts and were able to direct me as well. And I still have a abundance mindset coach so that when I do tell myself, like, I give up, I tap out. Um, she can kick me in the butt and tell me like, no, we're launching this program next week. So, uh, you know, I need, I need that inspo. I need that because I also tell people that they need that. So I have to practice what I preach. Yeah. I have a therapist, I have an abundance mindset coach. I have a financial coach. Like, <laughs> I was just about to say, you read in my mind, in. I was going to say, you, you don't seem afraid to invest in yourself. Right. And absolutely. as dream drivers, I think a lot of us, 
like you said, we may, we, we may be operating from a fear-based mindset of like, but what if I can't afford it? Or I won't have anything left, right? What would you say to that person who's really nervous about investing in themselves for the relationship advice or anything in general? <laughs> You have to invest in yourself and you will be the best investment that you make. A lot of times people don't necessarily have the money in the beginning to do it. But, um, and that was the case with me. I didn't have that much. I didn't have a ton of money to invest in myself, Mm -hmm. but I was like, okay, what can I do to get the money to invest in myself? What can I sell? So like, I knew I could give the relationship coaching. So I'm like, get some, some's giving out free sessions. And if they give a, you know, a referral, I'm like, if you give me a referral, I'll give you a kickback. Just tell someone about me. It's like spread the word. So, you know, I did a lot of like free events at first just to get the word out. Mm-hmm. But when I got to a place where I had like a few dollars to invest in myself, it was like instant. I'm like, without a doubt, I have to put this money towards other things that are going to grow. You know, I just invested in my e-course so that that I would have more time to spend with my one-on-one clients, but also be able to reach more masses with the online curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so you have to pour that money back into yourself. And if you're afraid that you're going to be broke, the chances are you, you may be, but you're going to be right where you began if you don't spend that money. So 50, 50 shot, (laughs) but at least then you'll have the tools to be able to know how to flip that money. Yep. And so, you know, the, the the first amount that you make is always, you know, it's, it's the hardest because you're dealing from scratch, but it's that second amount, you know, the first 50K is the hardest. It's the second 50K, uh, now you have the, the skill set. Now you've learned from your mistakes. Now you've like grown from them and you know, like, okay, this is what I'm not going to invest in and this is what I am, but you have to push yourself. You may have to borrow that money. I've borrowed money before to invest in myself. I've asked family members, I've sent emails out like, hey, can you guys donate to (laughs) this cause of what I'm trying to do? You know, and a lot of times we're embarrassed to ask for help. Mm -hmm. We got to push past that. How bad do you want this? We're embarrassed to ask people for a referral on a date. Like a lot of us won't even tell people, even when it comes to relationships that we're single. And I'm like, well, you don't want love that bad then if you're afraid to tell people you're single. <laughs> because it, he may have a friend who knows someone that knows someone that's right for you. And usually your husband in, or your wife is only like two or three people away. Yeah. But you won't open your mouth. Yep. So we you have really to have to mouth. step outside your comfort zone if you want to see results. Correct. You have to take a you have to take a risk and bet on yourself. So you mentioned something earlier. You called your husband your purpose mate, right? Correct. I want to get to that because with dream driving. It's not always going to be you alone in the car, right? Having a passenger. You might even now, you are growing, uh, you have a, you're going to soon have a backseat passenger as well, yes. right? In your car. Um, what has your experience like been like in finding a purpose mate? And how have you grown in, in really investing in your own relationship? I believe in going through, and most people do, multiple phases prior to your purpose mate. I think the phases that you go through prepare you for your purpose mate because you won't appreciate your purpose mate if you get him at 21. Mm -hmm. So I believe that (laughs) your 20s is really the the stretching you, the the living in the experiences. And when I say that you go through your phases, I'm talking about the puppy love phase, the super attached clingy phase, (laughs) the situationship phase. I'm talking about the toxic relationship phase. Then you go through the detox phase. Um, Then you go through the, you know, then you go back to the whole phase and then from the whole phase back to you know, the detox phase, like there's so many phases that you go through that I believe prepare you for your purpose mate. And then you get to this phase in your life where you're like, I'm tapped out. I'm tired. I just want love. I want to be someone's wife or I want to be someone's husband. And I am ready for that. When you feel like you are ready for that, and you have gotten your phases out and you have fallen so many times and gotten back up, that's when you start operating in your purpose, knowing what your calling is. And when you're ready for your purpose, mate, your purpose will be in alignment with their purpose. So you no longer will date any of those people from your past or anyone who's holding you back from stepping into your purpose. You're only going to date people who are also walking in their purpose and who support your purpose. And so that is what is in alignment with your purpose. And your purpose mate is someone who believes in your vision or the mission of your dream and what you were put here on earth to do and whose purpose is also to help steer you there and get you closer. So it looks like you guys really building your empire together, but also having the same core values, also operating from, you know, the same beliefs, um, the same ethos having um, you know, the same drive and willpower and understanding that this relationship is bigger than anything else. This relationship is because we have a mission here on earth and we're going to fulfill why God put us here. 
for a reason and nothing's going to stop us. We're not going to um, defy each other or betray each other or, you know, fall for, you know, less or whatever things, Mm -hmm. you know, there's all these distractions in this world because we got a mission and we're going to accomplish this together. And when you're searching or looking for your purpose, mate, because I do believe in asking you shall find, seek and you shall receive, knock on the door, we opened. I believe in that scripture. Um, And reason being is because oftentimes we're seeking, but we're not we're not asking or we're seeking and we're not knocking or like there's always something that we're missing within those steps. And I think you need those three steps when it comes to finding your purpose mate. It's not enough to just exist in this world and think that they're going to land on your lap. You Mm -hmm. actually have to do the preparation to feel competent, to feel confident, to get out there and be on the dating market and date and date and date and date until you find that person who's in alignment with your purpose, which means falling and getting back up multiple times. If I fall and get back up, I'm going to get back up 20. Most people are going to fall and get back up 10. Well, I'm going to find my purpose mate. And sorry, boo, you're not. Mm. Like you have to get back up because your person might be behind door number 20. And if you stop at door number three, because you're tapped out or you're hurt and you think this is the be all say all for you, either you're settling and you're not reaching your maximum potential when it comes to love or you, you know, you're going to be stuck in an unhealthy relationship when you should be keep, you know, you should keep going. Mm. We can't give up. Do you believe um, in the idea of a soulmate then? (laughs) So, yes. What your soulmate is, though, to me, um, is this deep soul tie, this connection to someone. Um, Someone who you are passionately, madly in love with that you feel so connected and bonded to, right? However, your soulmate is different than your purpose mate because the soulmate is more about how you feel. Ah, okay. Your purpose mate is, makes like, you have chemistry and compatibility. Your soulmate is more than just bubble gums and raindrops. Your, I'm, I'm sorry, your purpose mate is more than just bubble gum and raindrops. Your soulmate is like those feel good feelings of chemistry, but your purpose mate is more in alignment with like the the things that we, the mission that we have at hand and what we're setting out to do. Mm-hmm. So someone could be your soulmate. I think there's a lot of people who end up with their soulmate and they are so happy and just fine. But that person doesn't necessarily put there to help them build their empire or fulfill their destiny for them, their lives. It's companionship and they love it and it feels good. And that's great. You can have that. You can also have a purpose mate. And I think that there's multiple people that you can also be compatible with on this earth. And you just need to find one. But most people yeah. don't even want to try to find that one. Yeah. Or they just give up on themselves, like you said. Yeah. They, they just, just give up. They out. tap out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, as we wind down, Spicy, um, I could not have you. I keep saying that, but there is just something I really want. <laughs> I want to make sure that I, I talk about this, even if, you know, we. I know we're, we're, we're running low on time here, but you were about to be a mother, right? And I know a year ago, I was thinking when, you know, June of last year, I was thinking about, oh my gosh, I wonder how my baby's going to look. I wonder what kind of mother I'm going to be. How will my life change? I just want to ask you, what are some of the things that you're thinking about right now as you approach? Is this your first? Just so I know, this is your first, right? This is my first baby. Okay. How, what, what are you excited about, about the motherhood journey? Cause now you are joining the mama gang, you know, you're a mama dream driver. I just want to like, this is just real casual. Like what, what are some of the things that you're excited about? You're nervous about, you're looking forward to. Most excited about, um, my growth. So yeah. <laughs> you will grow, honey, you will yeah. grow. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited for the next stretch of my life. Like, and that's, you know, this, it may sound selfish, but, um, I read, you know, the conscious parent, which is a great book, highly recommend it. And it was just saying how much you will learn about yourself as you raise this child and you're forming, you know, their life, mm-hmm. they are born with the spirit and you are just there to, you know, be their tour guide versus trying to control them and make them emulate the life that you wanted or your life that you're living. And so I'm really excited to um, teach them, you know, and make this generation even of course, you know, better than mine. You know, my mom did the best that she could with me. And now I'm going to elevate that with each one. It should be elevating. So I'm super excited to teach them about my, um, my, my culture and the things that I know from, you know, spirituality. Um, My husband is Jamaican and I am black and Mexican. And so, you know, our child's going to be a Jamexican. And so I'm excited, of course, like you said, you know, to see how they look. I know they're going to be so bomb and beautiful, but like, I'm more excited to teach them about like what to do with that, like how to guide people, how to lead people, um, how to entertain, you know, I'm excited to teach them the spicy method. I'm excited to actually match my child. Like, I feel like life would be so much easier if our parents still did play a role in helping us find love. Um, 
traditionally and you know a lot of other cultures too you know your parents would try to set you up um i'm looking forward to being that guide for my child not so much as like you have to marry this person who i say but more teaching them the qualities of what a healthy relationship looks like exactly how you select a mate this is how you show up as a boyfriend now this is how you show up as a husband and this is how you're going to guide the female psyche and emotions like i'm looking forward to teaching them how to be a superior man um, you know, I'm having a son and he's going to have a lot of, you know, he's gonna uh, have I have babies. a son too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, so excited. I'm really excited to just teach him. Like if, when he has his first girlfriend, I'm like, listen, just talk to her, communicate. Yeah. To her. I feel like, especially for black men, you know, I yep. have a black son. That communication is something that they're often, you know, it's often seen as a oh, black man can't communicate. Right. I want to change that notion. Yes, he can. And yes, he will. My son will be yeah. a very good communicator. And let's rewrite this narrative. Hopefully. Like, yes. let's rewrite this narrative. I feel like we're have, going to have a generation of such little like woke conscious kids yes. that they're going to be such amazing like leaders in this world. I'm so excited. So yes. excited. Well, I'm excited for you. I think motherhood is motherhood is tough, but it's been a journey and it, you it will teach you so much about yourself that you you don't even know yet. So congratulations. I'm so I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not putting any fear. Person. It's going to be fun. And listen, it's a journey. It's a journey that you can do. It is a journey that you can definitely win at. Um, you know, Spicy, you couldn't be a dream driver without your keys to success, right? So as we wind down, can you tell our dream drivers three things that you think you need in your toolkit or that you need in your toolkit before you hit the road? I'm going to give you guys five because it okay. is my spicy method. Yes. <laughs> so you need self-awareness. You need to know who you are, what you want and what you have to offer. Okay. You need to know P for passion. Um, what are things that you are great or that excite you or that you have to bring to the table that create passion for yourself, but then also share that passion with someone else? What can you teach someone? Mm-hmm. You need to have intimacy, knowing how to be vulnerable, how to bond, how to connect with someone, how to emotionally guide them. And then you need to have communication, how you're going to deliver that message so that your audience can receive that. And then you need to have, yes, true belief in yourself, belief in the unknown, willing to take risks, stepping outside of your comfort zone and saying yes to the universe and love. You need to have S-P-I-C-Y. Those are the five yes. things spicy, spicy. for keys to success. <laughs> <laughs> and tell our dream drivers where they can connect with you online if they want to learn more about what you do, book you, you know, Absolutely. they want to work with you. You guys can schedule a free consultation with me. Um, and you can also find me, um, you know, through, of course, like my website, thespicylife.com. But you can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi on social. Um, I have a podcast as well where I give relationship advice out called The Spicy Life. And you can click and subscribe, share it with a friend. But I would love for you guys to schedule a consultation. And then I also have a relationship course um, called My Spicy E-Course that they can register for. And for being on this, um, you know, for listening to this episode, they get 500 off, get spicy 500, and they can get 500 off that six week course where I teach them the spicy method and like the actual exercises that they need to apply to their lives to unlock the power of their passion to attract their purpose mate. All right, that's a wrap for episode 272 of Spicy and Marley. I hope that you enjoyed hearing her dream driving journey as well as her keys to success. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you're sharing it with your community. You can find us across the board at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Dreams and Drive. You can also use the hashtag Dreams and Drive when sharing as well. And if you can't get enough of Dreams and Drive and want to make sure that you are connected on all levels, all fronts, right? Join our email community, The Keys, and get weekly updates from me via email. You can sign up by going to dreamsanddrive.com slash join, dreamsanddrive.com slash join. We have Dreams and Drive t-shirts and crewnecks available at dreamsanddrive.com slash shop. That's dreamsanddrive.com slash shop. And a lot of people also ask, how can we support the show, Raina, if we enjoy the message, if we enjoy the community? There are multiple ways that you can support. Just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash donate. That's dreamsanddrive.com slash donate. As always, keep dreaming, keep driving, and we'll chat again in episode 273. Bye, guys.